Hello do-it-yourselfers, I'm Terry Peterman, the internet electrician. Welcome to another one of my video shorts on current topics. Let's get started. Alright, next up in my smart home series, today we are working on the Nest. It's the Nest Hello Video Doorbell. And as usual, we'll start with unboxing it to just make sure that all the components are here as it says on the box. And opening it up, we find the star of the show, the Nest Video Doorbell unit itself. Digging a little deeper here, we have the literature package, which contains the, the window sticker, the installation guide, and some product warranty information. This is the chime connector. And inside this box, we've got the extension wires, the release tool, a masonry bit, a couple concrete anchors, and some screws. And lastly, in the bottom of the box, we have what they call the 15 degree wedge. And this is the actual mounting bracket that we'll be using to install the doorbell. So next up, we need to open the app and we're just going to walk through this step by step with the app and get this installed and working for us. So the next thing we're going to have to do to get things started here is open up the Nest app. And having done so, we'll go to the settings menu down here to add a product scan the code so that code is on the back of your nest hello video doorbell you just center it in that qr code scan tool and it tells you exactly the product you have so now we'll go next if you weren't here watching me you could watch the video they have for you on the installation it also steps you through the compatibility checker which I of course already did to make sure that I'm compatible so we're just gonna go past this because we're doing a real-life installation here make sure you got a power drill a screwdriver and my Wi-Fi password check check and double check and the placement guidelines here it says make sure it's uh, it's only ever gonna be between 5 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit that uh, will be pushing that envelope a little bit here in Arizona but in the front entry, which is north facing, I think we will stay under the 104 degrees. There's some placement guidelines you can expand upon. Now we need to find the Nest Chime connector in the box. And we're going to go and hook that up to our door chime and our transformer. And it says shut off the power, which we'll do. Remove the cover and any batteries, which we will do. Take a picture, we will do, and let's go have a look, and then we'll fill out this next portion. Here's my chime transformer location. It's in the garage, and that's a typical place to put it here in Arizona anyway. They usually put it up high near the hot water heater, and then they have it in a, an outlet box with the low voltage wires just coming out of the wall, as you see there, connecting to our 16 volt transformer AC transformer so we'll shut off the power to that locating this transformer may be one of the biggest challenges that you will face when you go to hook up your nest video doorbell some places they put them in the mechanical room uh, some places they have them attached right to the panel or to an electrical box somewhere near the panel that has power all the time so that your doorbell has power all the time so you're gonna have to search around for it in your home but we found it here in the garage so here's my actual chime unit. It's in the hallway and you see that thing scabbed onto the side of that. That's a doorbell extender, wire, wireless extender I have so that we can hear the doorbell from the backyard. So yours likely won't have that on it. Let's open up this cover and see what we have. And here's what we have behind the cover in our chime, front door only. And as you can see, we have two wires on the transformer terminal and just one on the front button terminal. Nothing on the rear button because we don't have a rear door chime here. 
So here I am again at the chime itself. And once I got some good lighting set up for the filming here, I noticed that actually both terminals have two, two wires connected on them. So they've used telephone wire and used them as parallel feeders just for a little better ampacity on the doorbell circuit. Not the best thing to do, but that's what we're stuck with here. So, Okay, so having looked at our chime, we saw that we had two terminals that had wires on them. So it asks you how many terminals had wires on them and we're going to say two, even though that two of them were connected together on one terminal. Uh, that's they specify that don't count those, just count the ones that are on terminals. So two, we have the terminals look exactly like that top figure other than the front and door are reversed, front and rear I should say. So we hit that, we're replacing the front door. It's the only one we have here. There is the pictures of it. It says disconnect the front wire from the terminal. So we will do that. So as per the app's instructions, that first step is remove the wires that are on the front terminal, the terminal marked front. Now I need to see if those terminals, if those wires will fit under that little clip on the chime connector. So that wire we disconnected from the front terminal on the chime, we put that into the wire clip, the plastic clip on the chimes, the chime connector's white wire. So we will do that. So it says remove the one connected to the terminal mark front and connect it to the white wire clip. And they fit in there nicely. Having completed that step, now we take the chime connector's white wire and we connect it to the front terminal on the chime. Now the next step, back at the transformer here, we are going to hook up the white wire to the terminal that we removed called front. Taking care to put the wire around the terminal clockwise. All good wiring practices apply here even on the low voltage. Wrap that wire clockwise around the terminal and tighten it down snugly. Okay, so now that we've got the white wire connected to the chime on the front terminal, the terminal marked front, moving on, it says disconnect the transformer wire. So we remove the wire wires in this case connected to the transformer terminal. And again, we need to clip those so that we only have about a quarter inch of exposed wiring. And it said connect that to the wire clip, gray wire. see that going in you push on this tab and shove the wire in the hole and then release the tab and make sure it's clamped in there good which it is and that step is done now we need to connect the chime connectors gray wire to the transformer terminal so let's go do that you hook the gray terminal gray wire from the connect from the chime connect Drop your screwdriver, but you pick up your backup one you had. And you hook that to the transformer terminal. Having done that step, now we move on to make sure our connections are secure. So we've done that, we've tug tested, everything is all good and secure. Now let's go find a place to mount that chime connector. Some of the things they say to watch for here is make sure it won't interfere with any moving parts and muffle your chime. Use the adhesive tape to stick it on the outside of the box or tuck it inside if there's room. And now the final step here at the chime itself is to make sure nothing is going to hamper the movement of those plungers that hit the actual bells. And you also Looks like we're going to have room right inside the box to stick the chime connect. So 
Remove the backing. And I think it'll fit right here. Again, we gotta get those wires all out of the way so they're not hampering the movement of the plungers. And that's gonna be a little tricky because they go right beside the return springs on the plungers. And of course I shut off the power that fed the transformer, fed the 120 volt to my bell transformer. I was lucky my panel was labeled and I knew which circuit that transformer was connected to. You may not be so lucky because they always do just put that on a circuit that's going to be live all the time and it doesn't need to be on its own circuit so chances are they may not have labeled that on your panel so what you'll have to do is just keep trying the doorbell shutting off individual circuits one at a time until your doorbell no longer functions. So like I said finding a place to get these wires where they're not going to bother the chime the strikers. Okay, testing it again. Everything moves freely. I can put that cover back on. All right, and our next step in the sequence is find the doorbell and the wall plate. We're going to install the wall plate and attach the nest hello in the next few steps. Got the doorbell wall plate. Now we'll go outside and see what we can do to mount that wall plate. So here's the location of my front door push button and it's in a pretty good spot I think. So I don't know if we'll need to install the wedge here because that wedge is only if you have it maybe closer to your door here and you need to get a better angle on having a look at who's at the door. So right out here I think it's going to be a pretty good shot so we'll try it without the wedge. So now we need to pull this push button out and check the wiring and disconnect them as per the next step. Remove the doorbell push button. We'll go see what we have to do to remove our push button. All right, so as they say, figure out how your push button is mounted. This one just pulls off. It's got some clips here, you see, and it looks like a piece of conduit sticking out through the wall. So we need to disconnect these wires, mount our mounting bracket, and then reconnect them to the nest video doorbell. This takes a medium to small size Phillips screwdriver. Okay, and again they've used telephone wire as parallel feeders. But that's what we have now to connect to the unit itself. So we need to install without the wedge. Mark the screw holes. It's going to be tricky on mine, but let's go out and see what we have to do there. Now I see where I'm going to have a little difficulty mounting this bracket to hold the, the video doorbell unit. This is all just stucco here. In behind that, you're not likely to find any wood until you get past a layer of styrofoam. So I'm going to try to drill holes very carefully and use the concrete or the anchors that they provide, the inserts, and see if I can get a good bite in that stucco without busting out the stucco. If that doesn't work, we'll have to go to plan B, but let's give it a try. So I put my bracket on the wall here. I leveled it with my level, marked my holes, and then attempted to drill holes with the concrete bit they provided in my DeWalt drill on the hammer drill setting. And of course, it broke out rather, rather grossly. And uh, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get some anchors in there, but we're going to try and see what we can do. Okay, so I was able to find a couple anchors that worked for me, two different styles, but I did get it to, to bite into that stucco. And using my iPhone measure and level app, we can level it. And there we go. And I think what I'm going to do is probably fill in some caulking in behind that bracket just to stabilize things. 
a little better. But now we can go to connecting our Nest video doorbell. So having had to mess around a little bit to get that bracket on, we got it in place. Put the screws in. Connect the wires to the head unit and it does not matter which wire goes where, so we'll do that. Now one of the final steps of installation is connecting the unit itself here to the two wires from the doorbell push button. Again clockwise around the screw, tighten it snugly. Trying to get my hand out of the way. Okay, now we snap it into the bracket and we proceed to the next step. Attach the doorbell to the wall plate. Insert it top first and then push in the bottom. So now with the headpiece snapped firmly in place, you do that by pushing it in at the top first and then snapping it in the bottom. And there's the release that you can use the uh, special tool to release it if you need to get that off the wall bracket. And I went and turned the power back on. Now we'll go out and check to see that it's lit up. So I turned the power back on and out here checking to make sure that it's lit up and it is. So we can move on to the next step. Now we gotta peel that protective layer off of the camera lens. Where are we putting this camera? Well, we put it at the front door. It says it's connecting to my camera. The Nest Hello Video Doorbell needs the Nest Connect and we have a Nest Connect because we have the Nest X Yale door lock on the front door. Seems to be connecting now, says it's setting up the Wi-Fi. Looking for the camera. Okay, up pops the Wi-Fi network, so I will connect to my main network here. I'll insert my password. I've entered my password. Finishing up, adding to your Nest account. That's all a good sign. I remember when I did the Nest X Yale door lock, the uh, Nest Connect failed the first time it tried to connect and it did here as well, but the second time it looks like things are going rather smoothly. Success added to my Nest, Nest account. Next. Okay, I have a live feed from my front door. I do not need to install the wedge. So on we go. Let's make sure that the chime sounds correct. Let's go give it a test. Okay, I went outside, checked the camera. It works great. Picks you up about 10, 15 feet back of the front door and all the way up to the front door, so it's a perfect camera location. Check the door chime, it works great. Moving on. My language is English. I'm all set. Now I need to uh, enable Nest Aware in my settings and we have a complete installation. Someone's at the front door. Oh, here's a real-time test. Actually, we're in Canada right now, and we've got somebody at the front door in Arizona. Let's see who it is. Hello, can I help you? Uh, would you like to um, we're not able to come to the door right now, but can you come back later? Yes, I can. All right, thank you. Have a good day. And there you go. 
Thanks for watching and don't forget my next in the series of smart home videos. It'll be coming up real soon. So make sure you like and subscribe my, to my YouTube channel and you'll be the first to know when I have a new video. Thank you for watching. I hope that you learned something useful from this video. My goal is to help you out with your small home electrical projects or minor repairs and to help you complete them both safely and competently. Please feel free to like, comment, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel here. And for more helpful information, visit my website at electrical-online.com. And if you'd like to learn more about home electrical, my program, The Basics of Household Wiring, is simply the best electrical educational information you will find. And it's available as a DVD or an instant download. I also use this information as the core material for my best-selling course at udemy.com called Learn the Basics of Household Wiring, the Electrical System A to Z. And of course, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter. But what if you need help with something right away? I'm one of the experts on the Magnify app. That's Magnify with an I. You download the app and search for the internet electrician from your smartphone. You can get instant assistance. And I'm also a certified expert on the JustAnswer.com team. There are links below in the description here to everything that I've told you about. So until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Terry Peterman, the internet electrician.